Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our series on strength of materials and to this channel, Making Life Easier. Kindly subscribe, like, share, leave your comments and suggestions at the comment section as well. Over the weeks, we have been looking at strength of materials. And we have looked at normal stresses, normal strain. Today, we are looking at yield stress, factor of safety, and allowable stress. Let's look at our first example, and then we'll see how to solve it. A structural member for a steam plant is made of a zirconium alloy. If an axial load of 11 kips is to be supported by the member, determine its required cross-sectional area and diameter. If the material has elastic behavior and a factor of safety of 2.5 relative to yield, relative to yielding, is dissolved. What is the load on the member if it is four feet long and its elongation is 0 0.05? And we have been given the modulus of elasticity and also the yield strength of the material. So quickly, let's look at how to solve this question. Good. When you are given a question like this, we have been given the factor of safety, and we are told that the factor, the factor of safety, the factor of safety is equal to 2.5. That is what is dissolved. 2.5 is equal to 2.5, and we are told that the yield stress. And the yield strength is equal to 70, 70 Pascal, or I think we were doing in KSI, okay, in KSI. Good. And the question is saying that we should determine the area and the diameter. To determine the area and the diameter. How can we be able to determine the area and the diameter if we don't know the stress or the load applied? If we do not know the stress or the load applied. So from the question, we have been given that uh, from the previous slide, we have been given that our, so we can say that factor of safety is equal to the yield, factor of safety is equal to the yield, the yield stress over allowable stress since we are told that it is the yield stress which is dissolved allowable stress good so from here we can say that factor of safety is 2.5 and we can say that it is equal to the yield stress has been given at 70 over the allowable stress. So let's just put there as allowable. From there, we can see that our allowable stress in the material is equal to 70 over 2.5. And from there, our allowable stress is equal to 28 
CSI. Same with the HPSI. Once you have been able to determine our allowable stress, we already know that stress of a material, the allowable stress, is always equal to the force applied over the area. And from here, if we know the force applied, the force applied, I think, was given in the question as 11. It was given as 11 PSI. PSI. So from there, we can say that our area will be equal to the, the load over the stress, or the allowable stress. And from there, our area is just equal to 11 over our allowable stress, which is 28 PSI. So this 11, I think, is in tips, and this is KSI. So our area will be equal to 0 0.393 inch. inches. Okay. Inch square. Good. So if that is E square, then we can determine the diameter from there. But we know that our area is equal to the perpendicular area is pi D square. So from here we can say that D will be equal to the square root, the square root of the area to so the square root of the area over. I. Sorry for that. The formula for the area should be I D square on four. So this will be D times four. D times four over I. D times over five. And from there, D will be equal to the square root of Zero point three nine three times four over our pi, which we know at three point one four two. At three point one four two. Then once we have been able to do that, we can see that our diameter is now equal to zero point seven zero seven inches. Inches. Now the next question which we were asked to calculate from the same thing is the uh, we're asked to determine the load, the load. So the load in the load calculation, we we know that the stress at a proportional limit, the stress is always equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain. So if we are asked to calculate the load on the structure, then it means that first of all, we can be able to calculate our strain. Our strain will be equal to the deformation cost over the original or the initial length. And from the question, we are told that the deformation cost to the material is 0 0.05. And the original length is in feet. We are giving four feet. We are giving four feet. I will need to change the feet to inches since the other quantities are in inches. So this is going to give us four. We know that four inches make one feet. So this is going to give us four times four. And from there, we are getting something like four times 12 to be 48. And from there, our epsilon will be equal to 1.04 times 10 times 10 to the power negative 3 inches. inches. Then, 
we we are interested in the we are interested in the stress because we are calculating for the loop. Therefore, we can say that our stress in the member will be equal to the modulus of elasticity, which is given in the question. It is given in the question as 11 KSI. We have times 10 to the power 3 times 1.04 times 10 to the power negative 3. which is our strain. And from there, we can see that the stress in the material will be equal to 11 points. The stress in the material will be equal to 11.44, 44. And from here, this this is in KSI. So from here we can see that our stress will be equal to the force, which is the load we are looking for over the area. And we had already determined our area as 0 0.393. So from there we can see that the force which we are looking for will be equal to the stress times the area. And from here, we can see that the force will be equal to the stress is 11.44. And the area which we have calculated is 0 0.39. From here, we can see that our force will be equal to 4.5 pips. 4.5 pips. Good. And with this, we have been able to determine all the things which were required for us in the question. That was a bit simple and easy to handle. However, if there is anything which you don't understand in the way we solve this problem, we, you can kindly let us know at the comment section and we'll be glad to explain everything to you. So once again, we want to thank you so much for being with us and keeping in touch with us throughout this series. So we want to say thank you for watching and do well to kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell as well. For now, we say bye-bye, see you in our next video.